All right, what's going on, everybody? All two of you guys waiting right now. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for joining us today for another episode of Bait Shop Talk Live. It's just me and Bubba tonight. Bubba? What's, what's up, everybody? We're back with another one here. It's uh, What is this, like episode six, seven, something like that? We're on six. It's, it's going by pretty good. We're doing all right. All right. Yeah, man, we're back for another one. Uh, flying without that uh, sometimes friend of ours, Timmy. I, I think he's going to be chiming in on the chat, though. He's got uh, some family obligations going on, so he'll be around in spirit and working with us uh, as best he can. Yeah, we thank all y'all. We know you got the weekend and everybody's busy, and we're trying to make this, uh, you know, kind of able for everyone to watch it and get on here. So we appreciate those of y'all that come over here and join us on it. If anything, hey, it's an excuse to get out of the heat because it is already crazy hot here in Florida. Yeah, you guys might notice that I'm in a different location today, and that is because I usually go from my front porch, which is like a Florida room, and it is, you know, 90 something degrees outside. I ain't, uh, it, it's, it's a little cooler in there, but not much. I ain't doing that today. That ain't happening. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Uh, I had my air conditioning go out, and I finally got it back a couple of days ago, and it's almost a shame for me to go outside at all. Yeah, that is the, I mean, of course, it only happens whenever it's working that hard, you know, and uh, the summertime heat, uh, that's when the air conditioner goes out. And whenever it's wintertime, that's when your heater goes out. Right. <laughs> oh, man, I've never thought I'd look forward to winter. All right, I guess we'll uh, jump right into it and get into the reports. Uh, I know we ain't got a whole lot of people here right now, but the show must go on, as they say. I'm sure there'll be more people joining us as we go on. Uh if you're watching, go ahead and throw us a shout out there in the chat. Let us know who's watching. Let us know where you're watching it from today. Uh, for me, saltwater, I have managed to re I go up into the creeks and do some saltwater fishing around the intercoastal and the kayak. Uh, the bait is definitely here. All the little creeks and tributaries were just full of mullet and glass minnows. And didn't see much action from trout chasing them, uh, but the redfish were busting on them, and the small flounder are starting to make their way in. The small ones always make their way in before the big ones do. I think as uh, more and more mullet show up and the mullet run get here later on in the summertime, that the bigger flounder start showing up. I managed to get some jacks uh, and a stingray. I had a big redfish on. He almost spooled me, and then he came off, so that's a shame. Got a couple folks here. Good old Rusty B. He's always usually with us. We thank you for being with us again tonight, Rusty B, and get out of the house and go fishing from Orange Park. I just came through your neck of the woods, man, coming up from Green Cove. And uh, that's really all I got for the saltwater report. The kingfisher here. Uh, I'm trying, trying to get my big boat out. It'll be the first time on Densmore Outdoors y'all ever see me do offshore fishing. So definitely looking forward to that. And I just ordered a Pin Fierce 2, the 8000 series. So now I'm going to have a Ooh. big spinning rod. Yeah, a big Ooh. spinning rod to go catch some big bull reds and maybe a shark. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's serious there. Uh, what's up, Rusty? And yeah, we're talking about Orange Park. I was over there fishing uh, that area yesterday. I put in doing the creek and ran across the river. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I can say the same about the saltwater stuff. Uh couple of times that i've been in like brackish creeks that are a little bit salty uh seen a bunch of bait showing up and a bunch of uh a bunch of slot reds um i hadn't caught any flying or anything like that but i hadn't been out in like the main river uh you know where it's super salty yet for that kind of stuff that's that's uh probably probably going to get into some more saltwater stuff this summer though because it is so hot that bass fishing can get kind of hard on that uh so we'll be yeah i'm sure i'll drag joe out there in uh in my boat at some point and we'll we'll hit like the little creeks and the uh, oyster beds and stuff too uh bass fishing it's the the main river you know where we're at so some of you guys might be local uh like him in orange park and i know a lot of you guys that watch us are you know, mostly Florida, but a lot of down south stuff. Uh, the the main river, the St. John's River, is where we are, and the salinity has been real high for I don't know, like a month or so. You know, running farther south than than normal. Uh, but it looks like we're finally seeing the benefit of all the heavy rain we've been getting here recently. Uh, it looks like it's coming back down. Uh, I went out yesterday poking around the northern St. John's, and you know, it was a pretty good day. Um, you know, it was, I was only out to about noon. Uh, 
I think between me and Tim, we caught eight, nine bass, something like that. Three of them were over three, but they're skinny for summertime. Uh, you know, so they would have been five pounders if it was earlier in the year. Uh, but we saw a lot of uh, a lot of vegetation that we hadn't been seeing uh, recently. You know, this far north where we're still getting into some of that salt water will kill off stuff. Uh, like uh, one of the places me and Joe fish a lot has uh, hydrilla and eelgrass, and you know we like to work those grass lines a lot. But you know we went out to one of those spots not too long ago, and it was like a you know a wet desert out there. There was no vegetation at all because the salinity's been so high. Uh, but yesterday I saw, you know, some of that stuff coming back, saw a ton of duckweed everywhere, which, uh, you know, I haven't seen that around here and since last year. Uh, and I saw some, some new lily pads popping up in places that we hadn't seen any before or in a long time anyway. Um, and it was, you know, some of those good flat lily pads that we don't get often either. We get those freaking, whatever those ones called that stand up out of the water that like to snag everything that you try to throw into it. Out of your dock. I yeah, dock pads. I call them a pain in the butt. Right. <laughs> uh, but I saw some uh, some of those flat ones popping up over there in the Julian Creek area, uh, which I hadn't seen those over there in a long time. Uh, but a bunch of duckweed. So I'm, that's got me thinking that the salinity is running down and the bass bite was real, real good, even though it was hot. Uh, water temp was 88 degrees. And, you know, it, it stayed good bite through midday. Uh, so that new vegetation popping up is thinking we got the, the salinity is coming down. I'm hoping that uh, that it's going to be picking up as far as bass goes. Now, summertime fishing gets d- tough. That's uh, some of these bass reports coming up whenever that water temp is. It's It was 88 yesterday. It's going to be up 90, 90 plus here probably this week because uh, it's going to be mid 90s air temp all week. So it's probably going to be 90s water temp and it can get difficult bass fishing in 90s water temp. Uh, but we'll talk about some of those, those things a little bit later on, but, but saltwater, uh, you know, he's looking up. We might be doing some more of that here. Freshwater is looking up as well. I mean, it's, it's, you know, tail into June, actually pretty good. Usually whenever it starts to slow down for freshwater and it's actually pretty good to me. Yeah. Uh, my experience on the river is a little bit different than yours. Y'all were getting them back in a Creek. Uh, we had a tournament there out at Julian Creek. Me and my partner ran South. We went to green cove. And fished our way back up. Couldn't find. Uh, went to uh, was it Tapoy Creek, and the water it was it was just real choppy. We couldn't go where he was catching them good before. And only bass that we caught were in the main river, uh, and they were all on docks. We had one dock we caught four bass off of uh, out of all out of one dock. So, and then the tournament ended up being one on docks, uh, except for it was in Doctor's Lake that ended up being one for bass fishing. But it's definitely t- is tis the season for night fishing. Uh, let's yeah. start looking into some yeah. gear. It's, I'm going to start looking into some gear to uh, add lights to the GoPro so I can start doing night fishing more. <clears throat> and uh, I'm probably going to be getting more into the salt. I don't have any tournaments for July at all. Actually, we don't even have any tournament till the end of August. So I'm going to have a lot of free time, and I really want to get after the saltwater fishing more. So it looks like we're going to be more relying more on Bubba for uh for the freshwater reports <laughs> sorry man uh, That's all I, right. start- I can't i can't stop I, I got the you know i got the bug i'm not gonna quit uh <laughs> I'll, I'll do it year round even when it's tough sosta msp what's up buddy hey man drop me uh tell me where you're from too we always like to check in with everybody see where they're watching from um thanks man thanks for the sub dude check out joe too he puts up a lot more content than i do uh you know, I, I, we fish together all the time. Um, I'm kind of lazy about uploading stuff, honestly. Uh, uh, but, not here lately. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we're probably going to do some more salt water, uh, but I will always, I'll, I'll, I won't quit with the fresh water. I'm, I'll do it year round. You know, I, I'm up at all kinds of weird hours. Um, I'll probably try to get some lighting going, some LEDs on the boat and stuff like that too. Uh, it is nighttime fishing is, is this time of year because it's so freaking hot. Right, and we're definitely, uh, I want to plan a trip for you and me to go do some night fishing out there at Kingsley where the uh, Giants are at. Hopefully we can at least get lucky and maybe snag one or something. I don't know. Last time it wasn't too good. At least well, if we go at night, we won't have to worry about the water skiers as much. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, that, you know, everything's going to be getting skinny in the summertime, but if, it, if they're going to be big anywhere, it's probably going to be in there. Right, right. And uh, 
also night fishing with salt water. I definitely want to get you, me and Tim and you know, whoever else we can get and uh, do a shark fishing nighttime shark fishing expedition off the beach. I think that'd be awesome. Like bring a pop-up tent, some pizza, some beverages, and just make a, make a night out of it. Definitely. Somebody, uh, some lanterns. Be, and I got some shark tags. It'll be good times. you will be running us off thinking we're hobos trying to live on the beach out there. Nah, nah, there's people fish out there all the time. Uh, my uncle used to patrol it back in the day, but that's, that's a different topic. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, I'm probably, I, I'm at 100 videos now, guys. I've had 100 videos put up. I didn't even know it. I was looking at it today and I'm like, wow, I've hit 100 videos being put up on YouTube. And, uh, I think I got, uh, a couple of weekdays off coming up here next week. And I want to do kind of like a tribute video to that. And I'm going to go to where my very first fishing video was. And I'm going to go back to Simpsons Creek. So I'm looking forward to putting the kayak in there and, going to take that big giant shark rod with me because believe it or not last time i was there i hooked into like a five foot black tip that came spiraling out of the water and broke me off i mean it was either a black tip or a spinner shark but either way i'm gonna take that big shark rod see if i can either hook that or a tarpon i haven't heard any reports of tarpon coming in close but i know they're out there so i'll take either one of those never hooked the tarpon and never caught a shark in the creek so that'll be pretty interesting yeah, I haven't heard anything about uh, about tarpon yet either. Uh, you know they're coming, but uh, I haven't heard anything about them yet either. Um, hey, real quick before we uh, before we get into why you haven't been uploading a whole lot of videos here lately, uh, I know we were talking we've been talking about it all spring and winter long about uh, about us doing some of those weekday tournaments, and we still we haven't even brought that up. We need to get out on some of those, but one of the things keeping us from that is why you haven't been uploading a bunch of videos here lately. What's up with the boat, man? Yeah, yeah, that's that's only part of the problem of why there hasn't been that much content coming from me here lately. It's just, you guys, you ever have that time in your life when you like have all these goals and stuff you're going to do and then life happens? Well, that's what's been happening to me. I, I, I knocked out like three videos at one day only to find out the uh, external mic I had on my camera died. So it was basically just me on a video. doing that it's just like you can hear no voice you just heard white noise and me pointing at things and talking so all that video was for not lost that uh the boat should be back next week it, it seems like it's always next week it's always next week every time i call them it, it had to be rebuilt all over again because uh the guy that originally did the power head swap on it did uh, a terrible job he, and he, he hooked up the oil it. lines backwards. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah and that, so that's why uh, all the pistons on the starboard side burned up. All the Every single piston had to be replaced. It all had to be bored out and I had to uh, buy a new rod. So it ended up costing me $3,500. And then the air conditioner went out in my house and like we were saying, it's summertime in Florida. Air conditioning in Florida is a necessity during the summer, and that was $890. So basically, I had no money to go fishing. You know, life has to come first, priorities, right? So I made the best out of a bad situation. I got a road, a road uh, external mic for my uh, DSLR camera and recently put up a video. It was either yesterday or the day before of uh, my kayak doing a one year over one year overview on it. Things that's wearing out on it and uh, stuff that's holding up and just, you know, how that vibe sea ghost is doing. If you haven't checked that out, you know, go to my channel and be sure to look at that to see how that vibe sea ghost is holding up. And uh, I just shot a video last night in the pond uh, doing drop shotting for bluegill. So I got to put all that together, edit it, and I should have that up next week. But like I said, my bag luck continues, and at the end of the night, when I was getting ready to finish, I lost one of my rods in the pond, and I dropped it. So I thought I was going to go back, get a rattle trap, drag the bottom. Well, unfortunately for me, when I dropped the rod, it was rigged with a live cricket on there. So I'm thinking maybe a bluegill might have grabbed the cricket, and now he's down there in my pond dragging that rod around because I <laughs> looked for an hour trying to get that pole back. I didn't even drug the kayak anchor. 
So I just I can't win for losing right now, and I, I really hope that my luck starts to turn around and I can start getting content up. And I'm really looking forward to getting some saltwater videos up because I know uh, a lot of my subscribers love seeing those saltwater videos. And now's the season to do it. July, uh, summertime, uh, saltwater bites really get going. The redfish are getting more active, and the bigger flounder will start moving in too. So Man, there's that's... my there's my run of bad luck. I just I can't win for losing, and I'm hoping. Uh, I'll get the boat back next week and she'll be under warranty still for a little while. I had an actual mercury dealer uh, rebuild it this time. So hopefully I can get another couple of years out of it before I have to do any kind of major repairs. I really hope that's the case. That That's uh that's bad. Whenever you lose a rod in your own pond, man. I mean, it, <laughs> at least you go out there and look around for it and you'd be out there with a snorkel just swimming around your own pond looking that's, for it. Here that's too. exactly what I'm going to be doing too. I even got scuba tanks. If things get serious, we'll be, uh, we'll be D almighty in it up over here. Look, I found some, found some pond treasure out in Dinsmore. Hey, there's also a square bill, uh, crankbait out there. Yeah, Rusty, 8,000 series reel. That's a big reel, man. I, I can't wait to get it. Be also my uh, slash Kobe rod, too, when I go offshore. Yeah, that's uh, that's Kobe pretty serious nice. there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty serious. That's that's a big one. Uh, that's gonna... <laughs> well, uh, you know, summertime, yeah, like we're, we keep saying, that's, uh, that's the time if we want to do some saltwater offshore stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's been good. Uh, saltwater reports have been have been really good everywhere. Uh, offshore has been great. We just had, you know, our few day snapper season going, uh, and you know, I, I, everybody is constantly reporting in on how many red snapper they're catching. They can't catch other stuff. Uh, I mean, it's saltwater is looking real good. Freshwater is going to get more difficult. Uh, you know, summertime in Florida, whenever, you know, water temps do, they're going to hit 90s this week. 88 uh, yesterday, they're going to hit the 90s this week. And freshwater, you know, for water temp, what happens, uh, you know, as much as anything, like they're like us, man, it's, it sucks when it's hot. They don't want to move around as much. But on top of that, um, you know, the oxygen level in the water goes down. Um, so they're not, they're not getting as much oxygen out of the water. So they're kind of holding stuff. They're not roaming as much they're not chasing as hard uh we uh, you know it did seem like a lot of that uh yesterday where i was catching all those fish not a, not as much movement stuff unless you hit it early morning it's going to be a lot of pitching flipping um you know if you're fishing somewhere that's real hot like this like a lot of the rest of the country and you know some of you guys that are even farther up north like we just had on uh you know last episode the uh the, our canadian buddy uh you right. know it's yep it's it's gonna be it's gonna be getting hotter up there you know coming up so it's not there yet, uh, but when it does, they're going to start holding stuff. Like one of my favorite, you know, everybody talks about top water in the summer. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is hit lily pads with top water. Um, like we were talking about earlier with salinity, with, uh, with all the vegetation, they're going to be holding stuff like hydrilla, uh, eelgrass, uh, because all those kind of plants are making oxygen. So that's going to be as much as anything, like the cool parts of the water, they're going to hold the parts of the water that have the most oxygen as well. Um, and then, you know, what we're good at in Florida, what everybody in Florida does is we, we just abuse docks, um, and docks are shade. That's going to be the cool spots. Uh, so deep docks is another real good one. Um, you know, summertime there, there, it seems like it's, it's a lot of close quarters fishing unless you're getting into deep water. Uh, it's something we both want to get better at is deep water offshore fishing. Still haven't done a whole lot of it. Uh, you know, we kind of try it here and there and get frustrated real quick and then quit doing it. Uh, but you know, I think part of, we keep talking about going to Kingsley. I think part of our, uh, plan going to Kingsley is there's nowhere else to go. Uh, once you're in there, you're like, if they're not shallow, we're going to have to fish deep all day and it's going to make us better at it. We gotta, we gotta just go do it and stick to it until we get better at it. Uh, but you know, it's so hard in the summertime whenever you get to like pitch and flip and docks and stuff like that. It's so fun to me. Yeah. So, so speaking of uh, top water, uh, if you guys didn't know, I, I just got home. Uh, and the reason I was in Green Cove Springs is because I had a, a pro staff meeting with Vexen. They had all the pro staff from North Florida meet there. And they were uh, showing some new stuff that Vexen is going to be coming out with. And of course, uh, I'll pass that along to you guys. Uh, they already have some rod and reels. They are some rod and reels. Of course, they got rods, specs and rods, for God's sakes. Uh, they already have some reels, but they're going to be coming out with some more higher-end ones. Uh, they're also going to be coming out with tournament, tournament weigh bags. 
And uh, they're doing a line of lures, believe it or not. Uh, they got frogs, which is what Bubba's going to love. Oh, yeah. They, they're going to be coming out with uh, crankbaits and spinnerbaits, buzz baits, and I think you said possibly a swim jig. So looking forward to get, getting my hands on some of those. And also they have a new uh, line of rods that they're calling their strike back series, which I so happened to pick up one today because I couldn't resist. And uh, this is a medium action and it's still made out of the same good stuff. It's just uh, less composite, more glass, which means it has a lot more action. This is a medium action, which is great for top water. Uh, Florida, we love throwing devil horse and like stick top water stick baits like that. And when that medium action, this is really good for it. Also, jerk baits when the water cools off, which is also what a good uh, medium action is for. And I like a split grip. Some people like a solid grip, but for some reason, I like I really like a split grip on mine. I like a split and, uh, grip too. Right. And what's really cool about the Strike Back series rods? These are uh, Vexen listens to us they listen to their consumers and they know not everybody can go out and afford a 140 dollar uh fishing pole and you got a lot of people that like to pond hop and fish out of kayaks and things like that yeah and they have any neon colors <laughs> yeah yeah there they do they got some pretty cool looking stuff but so they this is a lower price point rod so that way it gets more people out there fishing and vexen donates a lot of these to youth and child programs like uh, Mike Iaconelli has the inner city uh, thing for kids. Vexen donates a lot of these rods for those inner city kids to get out there and go fishing. You know how much those run? Uh, I believe these are like $89. That's not bad at all. Right. And you get the combo with the reel on here too for 140 So you're getting a rod and a reel for the price of only one rod, regular Vexen rod. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Um, talking about medium top water and also you mentioned jerk bait rods i just picked up a uh, a casking rod it's the first one of theirs I've, I've gotten I, you know you guys know if you've seen this before i'm a fan of their reels um you know i'm notoriously cheap uh, and i like their reels their reels are you know higher quality than the price point on it i picked up a uh, one of their speed demon rods here is a six foot eight medium jerk bait rod it's a fast tip on it and i got it specifically with the idea of uh skipping senkos um you know, and then you have mediums perfect for that fast tips, perfect for it. But what Joe was telling me, or, you know, maybe think of was a lot of times you hear people, uh, missing hook sets on frogs. Um, and a lot of that's the wrong, wrong rod. Oftentimes it's the wrong rod. I mean, there's a lot to it with, you know, hook set on it as well, but a lot of times people are using the wrong rod. Uh, I like to throw top water on a medium rod. If it's a medium heavy, I like it a little more flimsy. Uh, but I like to throw top water on a medium rod because it's a little it's a little better hook set on it because it's got that little bit more play into it. Pretty much anything with treble hooks, you you want something with medium action. That way you're not pulling it away from them or ripping the smaller hooks out of their mouth. It gives them more time to grab it. Well, I, um, you know, you're getting into, uh, you know, like different types of rods with stuff like that, too, like cranking rods, stuff with treble hooks. Like I like to throw a lipless or a crankbait or even like I throw chatterbaits on a medium heavy, but I throw them on composite rods because they've got more of that whippy kind of medium action to it. The, the same thing, because you you don't want to rip it out of their mouth as soon as you feel it. Um uh, so, I, I mean, I, I like composite rods. That, that's why you see a lot of times you'll see like a lot of different uh rods with specific uses listed on them and that's it's for stuff like that where you know like a cranking rod is usually going to be fiberglass or composite uh it's usually going to be a little bit lighter action so you're not pulling something with treble hooks away from them um so that's that's a good point but a lot of people you know will see like different types of specific use rods and not know the difference between them um and, and there's there's a reason for you know that and that's that's a good example of like why there is a cranking rod because it's uh, usually either composite or fiberglass and it's got more play into it. Got more of a parabolic bend uh, than something that you're going to be like pitching with, which is going to be stiffer, more of a tip, um, you know, because you're, you're trying not to rip those treble hooks out. Uh, something that's moving real fast like that. You, you know, the tendency is you feel it stop rattling and you set the hook on it and you oftentimes will pull something like a lipless out of their mouth. Uh, because it's that doesn't have that you know kind of play to it that those cranking rods do right at the same time though uh like the reason vexen doesn't put 
on their rods, uh, cranking rod or worm rod or, you know, something like that. And they just list it as the action to it because they don't want people getting the idea of that rod's only for cranking or this rod's only for using for worms. Like I have uh, medium heavy and that's like my primary worm rod. But a lot of people would use medium heavy for throwing swim jigs or uh, by, you know, not vibe tails, uh, chatter base and things like that. But so that way people don't get hung up of thinking that this rod is only for this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I <clears throat> had the same kind of feeling like I don't like uh, when they list the, the specific type because people do think that like it's only for this or like the, uh, that enigma I have, it says like, you know, pretty much there. it says top water, Carolina rig, pitching, flipping, you know, it says like you could do everything on it where, you know, you could do most things with which, you know, different types of rods, but you know, just, just for, if you need you guys watching that don't know, uh, there, there's different types of rods that work better in different situations. And it might not be legal. Like most of the rods I have don't have that type listed on it. They'll just say the action, uh, you know, so, but a lot of it is the right tool for the right job. Um, uh, you know, so it's kind of do some research before you buy any rod and which, what, what you have, you know, in mind, what you want to use that rod for. If you see like, you know, pros with a million rods on their boats, there's usually a reason for it or, you know, like when we went yesterday, I think I brought five or six rods, uh, you know, but, and that's with something as much as anything, you know, you, you, so I don't have to retie over and over again, but I got everything tied on like a different type of rod because I'm trying to use the right tool for the right job. Kind of like using a medium heavy to go punching. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was a heavy, I was using a heavy, but, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean that, yeah, that one was not the right tool for the right job, but it did work. As long as it works, that's what matters. Yeah. Uh, how do you determine uh, your drag on like what, depending on what lure you use? Is that what you, I mean, is that how you determine your drag or what do you do? Okay. Well, I've recently changed up how I do it. Um, you know, as doing a lot of bass fishing, most of us, you know, we set the drag and we pull it and we go off feel and it's like, okay, that's good. Uh, Whenever, like, I've fished so much brackish water um, that, you know, I, I think I said on the last one or even earlier this one, I was bass fishing. I thought I was bass fishing, and I got broke off by three reds in a row, three slot reds in a row. Caught a couple of them, and I got broke off by three on, uh, it was 12 or 14 pound fluoro, um, you know, and that's that's usually plenty for bass fishing. Like, even if I would have cranked, you know, the, the drag down all the way, I probably wouldn't have broken it off fishing for bass but oftentimes with us here you know it snatches uh you know something like a red will pick it up and snatch it off and i i lost three in a row like that i snapped a rod uh on like a four pounder and kind of all that stuff stacking up is like man i i need to rethink this drag thing i think and so i've started recently setting it off the scale um you know, they, uh, general rule of thumb is 25% of your line weight, um, is what you want your drag pound set at. And most of like your, you know, your regular like bait caster stuff are going to have like a 17 pound drag, 18 pound drag. Um, you know, so that usually if you're doing something like 14 pound leader, uh, that's going to work out to like three, four pounds depending on your leader weight. Uh, so what you do is the way that I started doing it here recently is uh, I will put my rod in a rod holder at like a 45 degree angle, uh, put my scale on the other end and pull till the drag slips and then adjust from there. And, you know, forever I was just going, you know, set the drag, pull it. Okay, that feels good until I lost, you know, so many fish in a row like that broke a rod, you know, breaking on leaders like it wasn't breaking on the knot snap in the middle of the leader. I'm like, all right, I got to rethink this. Uh, so that's how I've, I've started doing it here recently. How do you do it? Uh, I do it. It depends. Like I do it by, uh, what lure I'm using is one way. And then also, uh, for what species I'm going after, uh, species is more towards the saltwater side. Freshwater is usually nine times out of 10. It's bass. If I'm throwing something that it has a stiff hook that I really need to get into the jaw, that fish, like a worm or a jig or I'm throwing in like really heavy cover and I need them to come out. I don't need any line to slip and I crank that drag as tight as I can go. I don't, you know, usually I'm throwing braid 90% of the time anyway. So I crank it as tight as I can go. Now on the other scope of that for bass, if I'm throwing anything with treble hooks or uh, 
light wire stuff like even wor same thing with worm hooks or a jig it has a, a light wire then i back it down some uh the reason i do that is because one if it's a light wire single hook you know like a jig or a worm you don't want to bend the hook out and two if you're doing uh treble hooks you don't want to slam it and then pull rip the hooks right out of their mouth so and also when you go to fight them when they go to make that run and that dive down when that last minute when they see the boat you want them to take the line you don't want them to rip the hooks out their self that's why you see a lot of guys they'll get a bass up to the fish or or they're gonna bass up to the fish they'll get a pass up to the boat and they're sitting there and they're trying to grab him they're trying to grab him and then they just hold the line they'll grab the line to pull them up to them well then the bass shakes and there's no uh kind of slack or no play in that line or give to keep those hooks from getting ripped out that's why if you're going to land a fish without a net have use the rod as a shock let that rod absorb and take that line and keep it tight and let it flex that way when he shakes his head the rod's still keeping it tight but given enough slack or enough uh, less tension to those hooks don't get ripped out and i also said uh by the species that I go after sea trout sea trout have really thin mouths yes if they you, do if you crank your drag all the way down on like something with a, just a shrimp and a mud minnow and a jig head or something like that you crank that all the way down on a sea trout and set the hook like you would a bass you're never going to hook a sea trout unless they completely swallow it because you're going to be ripping their lips every time so if you uh, guys remember if you're local and you remember watching kingery fish around here he'd have like a two pound sea trout but that thing be screaming drag like it was a uh, eight pound nine pound gator trout that's because he would loosen that drag so when he set the hook it wouldn't rip the lure out of his mouth and same thing when they made a run and use that current to fight it wouldn't uh rip the hook out so i do the same thing same thing for guys that fish for crappie speckle perch wherever you want to call them sockele for those uh, folks out there in louisiana uh real thin paper mouths so that's like the two things that set me up and the way i set the drag is i don't pull it from the reel like you know here's your bait cast reel i don't i don't pull it directly from the reel i grab it from the end of the rod which is what the fish is going to do and go by off of that i don't pull it from the reel because it, it's a major difference when you add that rod and those eyes yeah. into play which actually that goes back to you know what we're just, just talking about like rod action too um material of the rod and everything that's going to be di like a, a four pound you know if you swap a reel from one rod to the other it's going to be different because of, of action in the eyes line and you know the rod tip what what the rod's made out of uh, stuff like that but yeah yeah you had a couple of good points there um yeah, if if like I I know a lot of inshore saltwater fishermen here don't like targeting yellow mouth trout. I do because I love the way they taste and they're fun. Uh, but they've they're also called weak fish, and they're called weak fish because the mouth is so weak. Is actually why they're called weak fish. Um, I didn't know but, that. Yep, that's actually why they're called weak fish is because the mouth is so paper thin and so easy to rip a hook out of it. Uh, but another another good point you made too is uh, is is what you're fishing cover. Uh, yeah, because we do so much dock fishing here. I will I will go a little bit heavier. I'll go like 30% on one that I'm pitching to docks and stuff like that uh, because I don't want them, you know, I want to be able to horse them out of a dock pretty quick um, instead of them, you know, pulling me under the dock, hitting, you know, barnacles and crap on the dock and snapping that leader. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a couple good points there. I will run a little bit heavier drag on rods that I'm fishing docks with than uh, if it's something like like you were saying, like, uh, you know, treble hooks, uh, lipless, stuff like that. I run a little bit lighter uh, because I, I don't want to rip it out of their mouth. And also, it's usually open water. You can get away with a little bit better there. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that's uh, salt water. I crank that crap down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, even like even then, like, I get a big redfish on. I don't really crank it down because the same aspect of what I was talking about with a bass eater. They can, they got so much power with that big, you know, uh, broom tail they got. They can either pull the hook and just rip it right out, or uh, they'll end up breaking a rod if they're in close quarters if you ain't careful. Yeah, yeah, they will. Uh, like you were talking about uh, diving down next to the boat. I've broken rods on uh, on like medium heavies on uh, inshore saltwater fishing reds where. You know, you bring them all the way up to the boat, good slot red, uh, or, you know, 
uh, decent sized red, bring them all the way in pretty easy. They hit the boat and they're, they're pound for pound, a lot more powerful than like bass are. Um, and, and when they see the boat, they'll take off and run the other direction. And I've had it go snap. Yeah. I wish we could catch a bass. That was like 48 inches long. That'd be freaking epic. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, but yeah, I've, I've recently because of, because of redfish, redfish have caused me to rethink how I've set my drag. Uh, now I know it's kind of weird how I end up a lot of times in brackish water where I catch both in the same spot. So I'm doing it on bass equipment. Um, I'm fishing with bass lures and stuff like that. So that's, that's what's had me rethinking how I set my drag here recently. Um, there's a lot of good bass lures you can use for uh, salt water. Like a lot of people adapted spinner baits to catch redfish and flounder on it by putting a swim bait on it instead of a skirt. Yeah, I love a redfish magic. I mean, that's a you know that's a popular redfish spinner bait. Uh, but all it is is like a, a gold blade spinner bait with a paddle tail on it. Uh, but I I love fishing redfish magics. I I keep saying uh, and I've I, where I lost one. Uh, keep saying that I want to get a gold bladed chatter bait and redfish with it. Uh, I don't see any reason it shouldn't work. And I saw one, one that did snap me off. Uh, I saw one chasing bait and I threw it in there. I mean, he probably would have hit anything I threw at him. Uh, but you know, so they will hit a chatter bait, but I, I, I want to try a goldfish, uh, gold bladed chatter bait for redfish. Uh, try I, don't, goldfish. I don't, yeah. I mean, they might, they'll, they'll probably, they probably eat a goldfish eat too. Yeah. They probably eat a goldfish too, but yeah, yeah. I want to try a gold bladed chatter bait for it. But man, I've caught reds on jigs. I've caught them on freaking weightless lizards uh on top water uh i've caught them on worms yeah there's there's plenty like there's a lot of stuff they will hit but there's a lot that transfer over like ideally from from bass to saltwater stuff something i would think that would kill in saltwater and i don't know why i've never seen anyone do this yet is an alabama rig i mean yeah that's that's yeah. what they're they're chasing schooling mullet and schooling bait so an alabama rig saltwater you think would be freaking perfect like, now yeah, that you, you say that, I'm amazed that I've not caught one on that live target bait ball yet because I throw that thing a good bit in brackish water. I think that's something I'm going to try. This, I tried it last year. There just there was no fish at the uh, location I was at. It was a deep hole that I usually go to, and either there's sea trout in there or there's not. And that day I took the Alabama rig out. There was not any sea trout, but I am definitely going to try that this year throwing that and try to get something uh, salt water. If I could find one that's like a little bit more finesse, not so much the bait ball like you're talking about, just, but like, right. you know, like maybe a four way instead of a five. Yeah. A they make, no, that's a good point too. They make a lot of different size ones. You might have to do some looking around to find them, but there's a lot of different regulations like state to state on using stuff like Alabama rigs, like how many hooks you can have and how big they could be and crap like that. Uh, so you, you could probably find one in that size. Uh, if some of you guys hear the turn Alabama really, and, and know that it's not legal where you're at or, you know, where, you, you know, you have to find like a weird one for where you are because they vary so much. If you haven't seen that live target bait ball, check that out. It's like the size of like a big spinner bait. Uh, I think it's sweet, dude. I love it. My wife actually got it for me for Christmas last year and I've had to replace the little, you know, little paddle. Like they've got like little inch and a half, two inch paddle tails on them. Uh, but there's like four of them and a, a, one of the bottom ones on a jig head, uh, it's a little bit bigger and there's like a silver blade in the middle of it. It, it looks just like a little pack of school and bait fish going along. And I like to give it like a little, you know, a little snap, little character every once in a while. It looks like it, the school is darting around. Uh, but man, I love that thing. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that, check that out. That thing is, is pretty sweet. Yeah. You're paying for it too. I think it's like 14, 15 bucks. Yeah, I've definitely got fourteen, fifteen dollars worth of fishing out of it. I've I've used that thing, the same one since Christmas last year. That's a good deal. You think uh are we gonna get you in a kayak and salt water this year or what? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? I mean, it's uh I started out whenever I first bought my kayak, I was doing it all the time. Uh I was dumping in like Mill Cove all the time with it. That's uh when you went out to Mill Cove, that's how I knew where to tell you where to go because I'd put in that same boat ramp uh and go to mill cove and fish those docks for flounders and reds all the time yeah uh get out of the house and go fish and said uh nice to troll with too yeah that'd, that'd be a pretty good idea just troll with it you probably get some good fish doing that yeah i'm pretty sure they'd let you know that they was on there and what i figured it was too is if i threw it you know trout sea trout are schooling fish so if you got and i've had them follow another one up to the boat you could have a chance of catching like two or three sea trout on one on one go around 
if you're yeah. a, if you're fishing for groceries like I do when I go saltwater fishing, that's not a bad problem to have. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, the uh, man talk about about catching multiple fish in saltwater. We missed it this year. Uh, Spanish mackerel run. I, I like catching multiples of those at the same time. Running, you know, like a, a mackerel tree, and uh, and that's you get you know two three of those at the same time. Man, that's that's groceries in a hurry right there. Yeah, that was uh, the video where I got the seagull and he had the fishing line all around him. That was supposed to be a Spanish fishing trip for me, but they just weren't far enough inside the inlet and the waves were too bad for me to get out there in the kayak. And yeah. I was all, by, I, and I, I didn't have no friends with me or nothing, so I wasn't about to do that. And I decided to play it safe and stay in the inlet. But I'm sure they're still out there. I'm sure if you went out there with a spoon, you could come across a school of them somewhere. Yeah, you can find them for sure. It's not a, you know, you hit sometimes when they run through here, they, uh, they get so heavy that you can't throw anything in the water without hitting one in the head almost. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure you can still find some out there. Yeah, but, uh, this, and you, I, the kingfish should be coming in on the beach right now too. I, I I know they're catching them. I just don't know how close in that they're uh, coming in. I don't know. I haven't heard anyone catching any at the pier yet or anything. Right. Well, talking about uh, kayak and saltwater, just kayaking in general, what do you typically carry on the kayak? Well, like saltwater and freshwater, I, I really have two different setups. It seems like I take more with me when I go saltwater fishing. But uh, for gear-wise, I usually have anywhere from three to four poles. I have my little igloo cooler that has the uh, rod holder on the back. One of them is dedicated to hold the Go GoPro camera. I have a uh, little Gander Mountain tackle bag that has three tackle trays in it and one of them's for hard baits one of them's for soft baits like uh you know your doa gulp shrimp and stuff like or you know doa shrimp things like that and then one of them's terminal tackle you know hooks sinkers weights slides things like that and then of course i got my uh minnow bucket my little minnow bucket i hang over the side to keep my mud minnows or mullet in and then something you should always have with you in your console is extra food and extra water i talked about that in uh briefly talked about that in my uh, kayak review i did of the seagulls i always keep like a bag of jerk like a couple bags of jerky in there and a couple bottles of water i don't touch those unless i run out you know my initial stuff that i bring with me unless and, you run uh, out of pecan swirls right yeah unless i unless pecan swirls get blown all over the boat or something on the way out i had that problem happen to me last time bought a whole bag of them ate one of them and then the wind caught it and got blown all over the boat and emptied out <laughs> <laughs> got the diabetes oh man i was about to cry but uh so spare food uh something i'm guilty of that i need to tell you guys that y'all need to do put a first aid kit in your kayak i i need to get one in there i was going to build my own and like i said finances and life and everything i just haven't got around it but uh i won't be saying that probably when i end up getting a hook in my hand or get bit by a flounder or something my thumb sitting there bleeding so have a first, if you can, guys, buy the Walmart sells the little cheap first aid kits with stuff, you know, basic stuff in it for like 12 bucks. You know, I was here. I am wanting to be fancy. You want to put my own stuff in there. Uh, so, you know, have a first aid kit definitely in your kayak. It's something we all need to do. Of course, bring your food, you know, your like a sandwich and some chips or whatever to tide you over for lunch. You know, uh, water. Usually what I do is I do two for one. I'll get bottles of water and I'll freeze them and I'll put them in my lunchbox. Therefore, it keeps everything in there cool and I still got water in there too. So it's kind of like a two for one deal. Uh, let's see here. GoPro box with GoPro batteries and different cases and memory cards because I'm in, you know, we're in the YouTube business. People want to see what you're up there doing. Uh, when I do fresh water, I don't take the tackle bag with me. I just use the two tackle trays that can fit down on each side. Those are usually like terminal tackle more than anything or hard baits. And then I put all my plastics in my console uh, right in the middle of right in the middle. And in the uh, back apartment, I got sunscreen. I got bug spray. I have a stringer just in case I, God forbid, forget my cooler or something like that. And for saltwater, I highly recommend that you put your fish in a cooler or a fish bag and don't hang them over the side of the kayak because there are toothy critters that would love to eat your catch and might pull you in too. So you do not want to be in the water with fish blood and a hungry shark. So yeah. Definitely, bring, uh, definitely I, bring a fish bag or something. When I was a kid, um, I would go, I would go fish like a little, you know, little tiny Creek every day. And, uh, 
I would go uh, almost every day. I would make a stringer out of, you know, some fishing line and some sticks and hang them in the water. And I learned uh, real quick why that was a bad idea, because I would either one of two things would happen. I would either lose all my brim uh, to water moxin or a gator. <laughs> that would happen almost every time. Uh, so I, I quit doing that. Um uh, but yeah, uh, man, I've I've gotten real bad here. Uh, I, I, last time I went out uh, freshwater fish uh, kayak, I took a lot less with me. Uh, but I've gotten so bad about carrying so much junk in my kayak with me when I go fishing. I was, I got to the point where like every time I was carrying something more, another tray, another box, another this, another that. And I was uh, I was using like four of like the Plano thirty seven hundred series like size boxes. Uh, uh, full of tackle stuff and i was like man this is just too much uh so i really downsized that here recently uh talking about like food stuff i what i do you know i'm, I'm famous for my, my the way he is with his pecan swirls uh i bring a gallon of blue gatorade with me everywhere i go uh but i i take and freeze that thing the night before so and same thing as like joe was talking about it keeps everything cool and it keeps that cool all day long uh you know first aid stuff's probably a good idea uh definitely don't have any of that you know you don't have to go as far as like you do with the boat for the regulations on it but uh you know it's probably not a bad idea to have some fishing flares and stuff on there too and i know i said something about it last time one of these bad boys take one of those with you uh that's one of the little portable battery pack things that one is uh 16 000 milliamp hours um it's you know charge your phone if you get out there somewhere stuck with it or if you got lights or something that you could charge with it not a bad thing to have uh but yeah first aid kit flare whistle that kind of stuff too uh is probably a good idea to have i usually have a stringer with me all the time uh the way you know i'm I, i'm not as cautious about joe on a lot of things uh i just tie it on the side of the boat throw it in the water i mean if that shark comes to get me we're gonna fight it out man <laughs> well, I mean, I used I used to be that way, uh, and then a lot of people started commenting on the uh, videos, saying that man, you are very very brave to be doing that. So uh, I said, yeah, I guess you guys make a very good point. So I I stopped putting them on stringers and started uh, putting them in the cooler instead. Yeah, if I'm uh if I'm food fishing, a lot of times I'll I'll put them in in the cooler. Depends on what I'm on, you know. Like if we're like we were talking about yellowmouth earlier, I I don't have room for you know that many yellowmouth. That's uh that's going on the stringer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if it's a red or something, uh, some flounder fishing, I'll throw that in the cooler. Uh, but yeah, I mean uh, sunscreen. I always always have sunscreen and bug spray in there. Uh, try to keep some kind of light um you know just in case i got stuck somewhere and ended up you know in the dark or if i you know, a lot of times because i'm up at all hours in the morning we'll go fishing in the dark some kind of light with you um something that's that's waterproof uh you know it, it, you can't you, you can't plan enough for things to go wrong because something's always going to go wrong and you, you want to be in the set yourself up for the best case scenario whenever something does go wrong because god forbid it's the worst then you end up on the news yeah, uh, and we've been having that here lately. Yeah, some people have been in trouble. We had a lady not too long ago get eaten by an alligator. So it's not just sharks down here where we live. You, you gotta watch out for nature in general. Yeah, and and while we're going here too, uh, just a reminder, guys, if you guys got any questions, comments, anything like that, throw them in the chat. We do pay attention to the chat while it's running. Um, and do our best to answer any questions or respond to any comments, stuff like that. Uh, well, we got, uh, you know, we're talking about all this saltwater fishing and stuff. We, we got, we started our project, uh, and we haven't really gotten back to it too much here lately. Uh, chasing the slam, the Florida bass slam. Uh, we got to get back on that. It's going to be hard in the summer. Luckily, both of us got our big fish already. Poor Tim still doesn't have his. That's, he, he might have to wait till it cools back off to get his big one. I pulled the, uh, I got the SD card from him from our Santa Fe trip for the Swanee bass. Uh, and yeah, there, there's, you know, we didn't think at the time that it was long enough for the slam. It was, but I was using his camera because I forgot mine. And the only thing you can see when I'm measuring it on the buckboard is like the bill of my cap and like the tip of the tail. 
So uh, they probably won't accept that one. Like it could be any fish that was 14 inches. It- <laughs> well, the, the good news is that's the closest destination as far as the other species that we have to go to. So it's not, it won't be that far to go to the Saint, Santa Fe River. And uh, yeah, not- we'll take the boat next time we can fish more efficient, more efficiently. Yeah, I'm not too worried about about the the Swanee bass, especially with with you know they were easier to catch than I thought they were too, uh, than, than I thought it would be. So I'm not too worried about that one. But yeah, we got to get back on uh, on the chasing the slam. I think that, that should probably be our next, or at least the next one we check off the list is probably the Swannies are going to be the easiest. Right, and uh, like like you were saying, it'll probably be September October. We can do that, and then we got to really start looking and really heavy at uh going to the chipola to catch the shoal bass and we're going to have to get them because time's going to be running out yeah yeah that's uh we we got to get back on track with that whenever it starts to cool off a little bit uh yeah thank goodness we got the eight pound plus out of the way because that's uh that ain't gonna happen till winter time again <laughs> right and you overshot the eight pounder for sure on yours 11 2 11 2 cow my, I, I would love to catch a uh, double digit. Uh, yeah. That's fish of a lifetime. I, I don't know if, uh, you know, uh, it, 10 plus pounders don't come too often. And, uh, you know, luckily in Florida, they come more often than, than a lot of the other places in the country. But I don't know. California. Don't, right. <laughs> you know, and yeah, Texas gets some nice ones. And, but yeah, I mean, the double digits don't come very often. And I don't know if I'm, uh, it, it'll be a long time before I beat 11 2 if I do. Right, right. Well, guys, if uh, while we're doing this, we're starting to run towards the end of it. If you got any questions you want to ask or anything you want to, you know, share with other people, please go ahead over to the chat section. If you got any questions or want to know anything about the gear or rigs or places we go, go ahead and leave it over there in the chat section. We'll be more than happy to answer them. Like I said, we're man short. Timmy couldn't be with us tonight, so me and Bubble do the best we can. And uh, if you got any comments for future subjects you would like to see, go ahead and leave that over there too. I know get out of the house and go fishing. He likes to fish St. George or uh, Fort George Inlet a lot, just like I do. And I'm debating about going back there pretty soon. It was a couple years ago. I remember I fished there at incoming tide, and uh, there were schools of black drum coming up on the sandbars, and they were almost like how you see reds or bonefish in the flats and the keys. I think that's the closest thing we got to it up here in Jacksonville. And you can see them going to schools, nosing down in the sand when it got high tide to get on those sandbars to get fiddler crabs and look for shrimp and stuff like that. So it was kind of cool stand up in the kayak and throw at them until uh, a bunch of paddle boarders came right over the top of them, scared them all off. Yeah, they. Uh, I used to fish over there a lot uh, with my dad when he was alive, and and you can catch a little bit of everything out there too, man. I've caught tarpon out there, sharks, angelfish, uh, freaking, you know, all all kinds of gray mangrove snapper, vermilion snapper. I mean, just everything in there. You can catch freaking everything out there. Yeah. Uh, got- I, a little bit farther in, I've, I've caught a bunch of big black drum out there too. Yeah, we got something from uh, our good friend Rusty B. Is is anyone here subscribed to Lucky Tackle Box or Mystery Tackle Box? I can't speak for Lucky Tackle Box, but I know me and Bubba both were members of Mystery Tackle Box, and I believe, Bubba, you're still a member, correct? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm still a member of Mystery Tackle Box. They just recently reworked their website. I know I mentioned it to Joe, I think, earlier this week. Uh, Mystery Tackle Box just redid their website. They're carrying a little bit more variety of stuff now. Uh price point on it was what we were talking about before they did it um you know we were we were gonna look and see if they were carrying all of their own catch co stuff and stuff like that's kind of what we expected but there is a lot more of other stuff on there price point's pretty competitive it's not uh it's not better it's not worse than you know buying it in a store or buying it on amazon or something like that one of the good things about with them though that i will say is like you can add it to your box that you're getting every month and you get free shipping on it they just throw it in with that um, I, I have had a good experience. Like I think Joe canceled his before I started mine. So I've had my mystery tackle box running after he has, I've had a good experience with them, uh, on what I've gotten. Um, you know, the, the good and the bad side, uh, is that it kind of, 
it might not always apply to you geographically. Uh, like I don't use a lot of hard baits. Uh, soft plastic is king in Florida. I get the bass box. I've never got like the salt water box or anything like that, but I get the bass box and soft plastic is king in Florida. So I get, you know, a hard bait with every box. And a lot of times I don't use them, um, just because we don't, I don't use a whole lot of hard baits. Uh, but you know, this last one, um, was pretty good. The one before that had like a nighttime chatterbait in it and you know, I'm going to use that. Um, I've, I've, I've had a good experience with them though. I, I do like it. Uh, you know, it's the price on, on their other stuff in the store now is it's pretty competitive. I'll probably use it for stuff like that. Like I was looking at chatterbaits on there today and they're, they're running, you know, three, four, $5 range for like the standard chatterbaits, which is about normal. Yeah, see, uh, I had a different view of it when I got it. I started noticing in those boxes, I started getting a lot more Catch Co stuff versus, you know, things like you really wanted, like Lucky Craft or, you know, Strike King or actually, you know, name what I would consider name brand stuff that I was looking forward to. So, like, I, I was like, okay, I'm paying all this money, but I'm getting more of their stuff than the stuff that I'm wanting. And then I tried both boxes i tried uh the fresh water for bass and then i went and got the salt water box and then i went back to fresh water after the salt water box and they, they were selling like knockoff you know doa shrimps and stuff like that for the salt water box ups like i could take this amount of money and you know go to walmart or go to dicks and get the stuff that i really want for the same price and about get the same amount of lures actually yeah, my experience has been uh, since I started with them that it's kind of a mix. Usually you'll get a couple of bags of soft plastics in there every time. Um, and usually one of them is like name brand and one of them is like K either Catchco or Net Bait or something like that. Uh, and then usually the hard baits are pretty good. You, I mean, you get some of their kind of hard bait stuff, but I've, I've gotten a lot of like you know, the name brand kind of hard bait stuff that, that since I've started with them that I like. Uh, so it's been kind of a mix for me since I've been with them. Well, uh, we must be getting big time. I must be starting to become a bigger YouTube because we just got our first troll in the chat over there in the chat room. It was Mr. Gunder Muffin or whatever. And uh, he was talking some ridiculousness. So I, I kicked him out and apparently he didn't like it and gave us a thumbs down on it. Oh, oh, well. Hey, uh, here you go there. Check out the bottom of the cup, <laughs> Mr. Troll. What do you, oh, yeah. There you go, Mr. Troll. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, my experience with uh, with Mystery Tackle Box has been pretty good. It's It's been – it hasn't been amazing, but it's been worth the money for me. Yeah, get out of the house and go fishing, man. I'm really glad you joined us. Uh, I mean, I appreciate you been, you know, talking it up in the chat and interactive. And, you know, that's kind of – that's what we like, guys, you know. We appreciate y'all watching for sure, but also we like, you know, we like to talk back with y'all. We like to, you know, see what's going on in your neck of the woods. So definitely, you know, don't be shy in the chat. You're, you know, we're not going to get mad at you or anything as long as you're not talking some nonsense. You know, uh, like what was it? He said, like he said, he's like, yeah, I got so many lures. I'd rather just go find what I want at the store. That, that's right. Because I'm at the whole box. I might get like two that I like and the rest of them or something I'll just give it to somebody else just like you did Mary like I got these crank baits so I'll never throw them here you go <laughs> yeah I mean part of the that's part of the I'm the opposite in that uh that's part of the reason I like it though is that I've got so many lures and stuff that a lot of times I'll get something random that'll get me trying something different uh, that's, that's part of the reason that I like it. Just, just to every once in a while get something thrown at me that I don't have or don't use or something that I might try something different I guess I'm just stubborn, setting my old, setting my ways, like you know the old timer that I am. I'm just like I know what I like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, inevitably, you know, I go out there and throw the same thing that I do every other time. But you know, I I, I like seeing something different every once in a while. I guess. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. All right, guys. Well, we yeah giveaway time. Ha ha ha. Yeah, that, that, that's that's probably what I'm gonna start doing. Like, if I ever get back into mystery tackle box. Uh, Whatever ones I got left, I'll just put them in a box and we'll do a little random giveaway in a video. You know, not like a big subscriber giveaway, but like a random one and give them away to somebody. Uh, matter of fact, was it Jack Sparron? I still owe him some baits from uh, the fish tank video. So, if Jack Sparron, if you're watching this, I have not forgotten about you. It's just life has gotten in the way. Lucky me. It happens. 
right. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. It's uh, 8 o'clock. I still have yet to cook dinner. Got to do that. Got to eat. And got to get ready to go back to work tomorrow. I'm sure a lot of you guys got a lot of y'all got to go back to work tomorrow. But like I said, I'll be off next week and I'm going to be hitting the salt water. I'm looking forward to that. Maybe I'll catch enough fish to actually put on video or at least catch one big one. Oh, man, I can't tell you the last time I tasted redfish and I am so ready to catch one and put it on the grill. So from me and Bubba, we definitely thank you all for joining us tonight and we hope to see you for the next one. Usually we have it every second Sunday of every month but we can't do it the second sunday of this month because it's father's day so we had to have respect to all the fathers and let them spend time with their families and get spoiled hopefully and just relax that day bubba did you get spoiled and relax no no you know it's that's never what father's day is it was pretty much sit around and cook for everybody and all that stuff i'd have rather been fishing or something like that good thing my wife doesn't watch this right <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know that's how it goes i did buy myself a rod and reel for father's day though so uh but yeah yeah like joe said thanks for for uh hanging out with us it's all about community interaction um uh, you know hope to get back in uh in in the water here soon uh you know hope everybody's fishing this good uh like subscribe all that good stuff and uh appreciate it guys all right definitely guys help us out leave us a thumbs up you know give us a like smash that like button helps us out both of us go share if uh if you're watching this on my channel go ahead and head on over to bubba outdoors and check out bubba's channel he's got a lot of interesting stuff he's got some do-it-yourself stuff which i know we all on youtube love watching do-it-yourself kind of tricks and uh we'll see you out there next time i hope uh like i said next week i should have the bluegill fishing trip up and you get to watch me lose my fishing pole there at the end of it and i'll probably be out there with a snorkel here sometime in a couple days and so we'll be looking for some good stuff coming up from our channels we'll see you out there next time thanks for joining us and remember we do more in dinsmore y'all take care see you